and her songs are absolutely amazing. Oh, Ghanaian presenters or the Ghanaian public should stop asking Evangelist Evangelist Dana Samoa when she's going to get married because I think that people have a hard time to believe that a woman can be satisfied and happy and joyful single and his perspective on the industry that he's in is very smart and that's one of the reasons why I like him because he's very smart about the industry that he's in. My name is Miriam. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I make videos on travel, on culture. I also make, you know, motivational videos occasionally. In fact, in every video, I try to inspire people and motivate people. For this video now, I wanted to talk music. If you subscribe to my channel, you know that in the past I also made videos, my favorite Ghanaian gospel song, my favorite Ghanaian gospel songs, part two, part one. I was so young then. And so I thought, you know what, it's time for an update, not just for gospel songs, but I wanted to kind of tell you guys what I listen to in general when it comes to Ghana. I listen to all kind of music. I listen to Korean music. I listen to French music. But for this particular video, I wanted to make a video about the Ghanaian songs that I listen to or the Ghanaian artists that I follow because I never really talk music like that on my channel. And so I thought, you know what, let me just make this video for me to update you guys on what I listen to, you know, whether I listen to Ghanaian music or not. And so it's going to be such a chit chatty video, guys. It's going to be so chit chatty. So it's going to be so relaxed. So get comfy, like get comfy. I don't know whether you're on your bed, whether you're on your sofa, but just get comfy, like relax. Leave comments as well about, you know, what type of music you listen to, who are your favorite Ghanaian artists and why. And stuff like that um, it would be fair for you guys to know yeah i'm very particular about the music and the content that i that i um that i indulge in because i think you know music is very powerful you know i don't know you know that people like they who are just chilling they say oh it's not that deep everything is deep oh. if you live in this world and you don't know that things are deep then you're living in a fairy tale everything wants to get our attention there's there's spirits around like things like the world is spiritual you know the world is actually spiritual and so i think it's very important to be intentional about the things that you consume being watching tv the programs that you watch music that you listen to so you know everything is powerful and you need to be intentional i mean i am intentional about the things that i consume because i know myself i don't just listen to beats and the beat is nice and then the lyrics do you guys get that sometimes yeah i listen back to the song that i used to listen to as a young girl and i'm like did i just I didn't understand the lyrics back then, but how can a six-year-old kid be listening to that? Do you get that sometimes? So yeah, I'm just going to give you a list of artists that I listen to, being gospel, being, you know, um, Afrobeat, apply forever, artists that I listen to and why I listen to them. So I'm very intentional about the music that I listen to. Artists that I listen to or that I don't listen to like regularly, but it's like... You can listen to a song and it reminds you of your childhood. It reminds you of a certain time in your life. And one artist, Ghanaian artist that does that for me, I would say the Evangelist Diana Samoa. Boy, this woman, ha! No, this woman, I was gonna say this woman has hits. She's the hit maker of the gospel industry. You know, so honestly, one artist that, you know, their song kind of means a lot to me is Diana, Diana Samoa. Evangelist Diana Samoa. When you listen to, I could go up, but if you if you listen to, my dance, you know, it's like, you know, when it comes to gospel, you know when an artist is just trying to make a hit, and when they actually when and when their song was actually inspired by the Holy Spirit. You honestly, there's a difference these days. A lot of people want to make hit songs. You listen to a lot of gospel that just sounds good, but then you can't really connect to. And so the evangelist Diana Samoa, when I think about her songs, you know, you can see that, you know, it's very like, yeah, you can see that it's very spiritual and it really connects you, especially her worship songs. So when I listen to that evangelist Diana Samoa, it definitely makes me go back to my childhood when I have to go to church when I have to go to church and I have my parents playing her songs in the car and I'm like, oh. And it reminds me of my childhood. 
And yeah, I really enjoy Evangelista and Asamoah songs. And I hope that she continues in that area because as a person, as an artist, whatever you're doing, I think when once you once you forget about the God factor and once you become like like when when once you get big and then you 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 forget about God and you tend to rely on your own um creativity and you forget about God, God has a way of humbling you real quick. Whether you're an artist in public or whatever you're doing. If you, if you start thinking, I can do everything by myself, God has a way of just humbling you, humbling you. And so I just hope that, you know, she continues to make music that actually, like, connects people back to God. Um, and that she does not go into the way of, you know, just trying to make music too. But I don't, I, I trust Evangelist Dana Samuel that she will not get like that. And another thing that I want to say, yeah, is that Ghanaian, Ghanaian media, yeah, or Ghanaian presenters or the Ghanaian public should stop asking Evangelist Evangelist Dana Samoa when she's going to get married. Because I think that people have a hard time to believe that a woman can be satisfied and happy and joyful single. It's like Ghanaians have a hard way. They can't accept the fact that a woman can be beautiful and be single for them it's like what is wrong with you so Ghanaian media no and so mujai they have to stop asking oh when are you getting married or you think well, some people have actually been blessed with the gift of singleness you know especially like those in the christian community you know christians that have been blessed with the gift of singleness is like for them they don't have a desire to get married and they just want to serve god some people are like that and have that gift and that grace you might have it maybe she'll get married next few years i don't know people should stop asking her <laughs> when she's gonna get married it just it just gets annoying when i watch her interviews and always ask her about the topic of of marriage for those who don't know she has a new album out new single that you can check her out on spotify eventually done as someone the second artist that i listen to I told you this this video is chit chat, so get your middle, get your super mot. We are talking music right now. We are talking music today. So the second artist, yeah, that I have I'm okay listening to. I like the garden art. One art garden artist that I like, yeah, I would say is if, uh, is Dana Entry Hamilton. I mean that woman is blessed. I've had the pleasure of meeting her quite a few times actually you know, in church events and stuff like that. Even aside the fact that I've met her, she's actually, if I just, if I, if I, um, Dana Entry Hamilton is honestly a blessed singer. And she's one that so far I know, you know, it's like it doesn't just make songs just to make songs. You know, and I hope that these artists, these gospel artists stay like that. That's why I think it's very important to pray for those who are in the limelight. Because sometimes as people, as consumers, as, and as, as viewers, it's very easy for us to criticize people that we see or gospel artists that we see. But we don't really pray for them. And I'm also talking about myself. Like, I just say, oh, this artist is like that. Or why is this artist doing this? But I don't really pray for them. So I think it's very important to pray for the artists that you see, especially like those who are in the kingdom. Because it's really not easy. It's not easy. And instead of criticizing, I think it's very important to back them up with prayer. And so, no, she's one artist here yeah, that I really, really love. And her songs are absolutely amazing. I'm sure, you know, it's by God's grace, but it's like, they're amazing. She's been in the industry for long and I feel like I'm so happy with how God has elevated her in terms of the, the, the I would, I, stardom is not a great word to use, but in terms of the, her, the audience that has grew to love her, you know, it has grown over the years. And I remember meeting her a few years back in church and she was really like calm and she didn't have a long like a large following but she was still there she was chilling and she told me about her facebook page that i should follow her and it's like when i look at her now she's won awards in ghana and she's like one of the biggest gospel artists in ghana she's appreciated i'm so amazed by god god is so faithful because not just because oh she's popular and people follow her but it's like 
God, yeah, when you actually do things for his glory, even though it might take long, even though it's like, oh my gosh, I make, I'm doing this and no one is really buying this, my album, God will elevate you in due time if you remain faithful. And she's been in the industry since 2007 and even before. And when I think about her first, like, her first album, also Rebecca Sa, also Rebecca Sa, that was her first, like, one of her first songs. And it's like, from also Rebecca Sa to Hey, or I think about what I'm a work in progress. Like when I think about her song, especially a hey god guys, I was playing a wa before I recorded this video and I had a a praise session in my room. Like her songs are so how do you, affirmative. I'm singing these songs and I'm speaking to exist in certain things in my life and I'm confirming, I'm affirming the, what the word of God says about my life. And so honestly, that's what I think about the name Sharon Milton. So her songs are very affirmative and full of faith. The, you know, I've heard different people coming up with different testimonies listening to her song. So Dana Entry Hamilton is amazing. Even when I think about her old songs, absolutely amazing. There are so many. There's Joe Metal. You know, I can't mention everyone in this. So now I'm gonna step out a bit from like the Ayo Woo eh, Ayo Woo. I'm gonna step out a bit from that, and I'm gonna talk about other artists that I think are definitely worth highlighting. Years ago, I made a video titled Ghanaian Creative that are worth highlighting. I highlighted poets and you know Ghanaian creatives that are worth highlighting. But in terms of music. Whether you listen to them or not, yeah, these people that I'm going to mention, whether you're into them or not, whether you're going in or not, okay, you need to know, like, you need to, we cannot deny the fact, we cannot, it cannot be denied, it's something that cannot be denied, the fact that these artists that I'm going to mention, yeah, in the next minute, have definitely made an impact in the music industry even despite their age to think that four years ago yeah 2015 or 2016 that we had never heard of them to think about their names now when we hear them to think about their song to think about the impact they've had in the Ghanaian music industry is amazing and i'm talking about kiddie Kidi and Kwame Eugene, followed by King Promise. To think about the fact that these artists, guys, five years ago, nobody knew them. They probably knew them in terms of, maybe they were underground artists, you know, they had maybe a small following. Say you love me, baby, say I you did wanna. Me makuma ma won't you fly. No, guys, let's not even deny the fact that, like, literally, guys, five years ago, like, even three, four years ago, four years ago, we didn't even know these songs. Like, guys, let's not even deny the fact that of the impact that this this young artists have had in the industry. To think that, honestly, for I think they've definitely they definitely brought some kind of freshness into the industry it's not like i was even listening to other songs other than gospel back in the days but i can definitely say that these these artists you know or let me play a bit of coming eugene for you to know we need to honestly we sometimes we need to appreciate we actually need to appreciate you cannot deny the impact that these artists have had in the industry in terms of how they brought some kind of freshness and these guys are younger than me Kitty is, I think, no Kitty I think is the one who is older than me but Kwame Eugene is younger than me, King Promise is younger than me even me as I said, I don't really listen to other songs outside gospel like that as much um, but I cannot even deny that how talented these artists are and the freshness that they brought into the industry whether you like them or not whether you listen to the music or not you cannot deny the fact that they're talented especially since kiddie and Kwame Eugene started on a creative uh, on a talent show with kiddie winning in 2015 to know that four years ago 
or five years ago we had no idea who Kili was we had no idea who Kwame Eugene was we had absolutely no idea who King Promise was now look at how known they are look at their songs and the impact the impact that it had on in Ghana and you know tourism if the last artist that I'm going to give you yeah how hey I'm gonna tell you guys I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you a lot of people would not expect that artists in terms of me listening to the artist a lot of people will not expect it but i have to say guys kofi kinata <laughs> guys 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 this artist since last year <laughs> I discovered him last year the guy has been in the industry since 2013 and of course his latest songs uh kind of brought him in, in, in the limelight even more but i discovered him last year and kofi kinata i would say is one of the Ghanaian artists that i follow closely and i will tell you why as i said before i listen to an artist i don't just listen to music and so i check the artist out to find out how they're living their life no one is perfect I'm, I'm far from perfect but it's like i check the artists like to find out how they are because i'm a very curious person i interview people i love interviews and so i tend to watch a lot of interviews and so i discovered him kofi kinata or his name was okay i had heard some of his songs but i didn't even know he was the one singing it you know confession i didn't know he was the one singing it you know because Ghanaians like this kind of song so i was like oh Ghanaian, Ghana pop they like party party songs and so, but i didn't know he was the one who sang it but then he came on um, Mac Brown's Kitchen. If you guys know, Mac Brown's Kitchen is a cooking show in Ghana uh, presented by Ghanaian actress Nanama Mac Brown. Uh, it's available on YouTube. You know, they speak the local dialect. So if you don't speak tree, it'll be hard for you to understand. So the first time I saw him was on that show, Mac Brown's Kitchen. And, you know, I was looking at the comments and people were really loving him. I was like, who is this act? Who is this guy that everybody's talking about? And who is, what is this song? Things fall apart. That everyone is talking about Friday, Chapel, all night. So I was like, okay, let me find out. And after he appeared on Mac Brown's Kitchen, I checked his other interviews. I watched a lot of his interviews. I think I've watched most of his interviews because I wanted to find out who he was. And... Also, his personality kind of intrigued me. He, the guy is hilarious. And the first time I listened to him or I listened to his songs, I had no, I, I didn't even understand the words. I, mean, I don't have anyone in my family who speaks Fante. So it was really hard for me to understand him at first. I'm not going to lie. But then the more I watched his interviews to find out who he was and his background in music and stuff, the more i kind of adapted to his accent and i got to really understand him and his accent and he is a very very funny guy and the reason why i like of kinata aside from honestly when you listen to things fall apart even when you listen to his old songs adam and eva is like the guy is really good in terms of his lyrical ability his ability to rhyme he's passionate about music you can sense that in his songs but aside that, what I liked the most about Kofi Kinata, from what I read and what I watch, is his perspective on his industry, which is very different from a lot of artists. And I think that's what appealed to me as a viewer. And I was like, you know, this artist here, I hope he goes far. Because he has a very smart and wise perspective on the music industry as i said if you're someone who wants to get into the music in ghana in whatever industry in ghana you need to be very like the music industry the entertainment industry in ghana can be very toxic and that goes for hollywood and other anything that has to do with you being in public can be very toxic you know if you don't have your own values and if you don't know who you are and if you don't have a good background and you don't have your head on your shoulders an industry like you can swallow you and you can get into the beefing and competition like you can see now and from Kofi Kinata I like his perspective on music and when you watch his interviews different interviews that he's had and you have a lot of presenters asking him trying to get him into saying certain things like oh I would just paraphrase but it's like who is the artist that questions like 
who do you who, like do you think that you're better than this particular artist or do you think that you're the king of that particular town and in all Every time he's been asked this type of question, he's been able to respond very wisely in terms of I'm in competition with nobody and I think every artist is in their own lane and everyone is trying their best and so I'm not really in competition. Like, I'm just paraphrasing but a lot of his answers have been like that and I'm like, this artist is smart. His perspective on the industry that he's in is very smart. I'm not into all of his songs like, you know, play and another like one of his songs that's not really my thing but when i listen to illegal fishing or i listen to adam and eve the way this song is written things fall apart susuka oh my god Be Let me play that <laughs> Very romantic. And I just pray that he remains humble and he doesn't fall into the trap of beefing. And even his latest song, Behind the Scenes, is pretty good. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. A few years ago also, a couple, three years ago, I interviewed Evangelist Diana Samoa because she came to the UK for a program. I interviewed her in Shui. If you want to see that and have a good laugh, you should watch it. It was a good interview, actually. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me your favorite Ghanaian artist. Who would you recommend? I might make a video in the future highlighting my favorite Ghanaian, my favorite gospel songs in general, because people think that gospel song is not you just worship but there's some really cool gospel songs if you want me to make a video on it i will gladly make so so leave me your comments on your favorite gospel gospel artist um, your favorite garden artist and why you like them like what is the history behind your love for them why are you a fan they will give me topics on videos you like to make in the future and why not i might make the videos for you hope you guys enjoy this keep safe see you on my next video bye Friday, drop it on our Saturday. Ouch! Miriam, pa! Bye, guys.